What is going to happen? I mean, the King Charles is now, hey, the Commonwealth Games go over there. How does this look when they don't know where they're going to host it right now? Oh, if it's going to happen, full stop. When right? is it due to happen? Let's get into the show, my friend. Now, I'm going to take the old headphones off, so I don't need them anymore. But I want to know what we're going to delve into first. Can you imagine um, you've got a contract in place, you're going to be hosting one of the biggest sporting events in the world, and you're getting a phone call going, um, look, mm. I'm going to have to cancel on you and pull out of that contract and not do it anymore. I mean, only half the world's going to this. Only half. Commonwealth. So big. Yep. Um, yeah, it's been really interesting sort of week watching that, and also – how the story has kind of washed over since the whole cancellation of the Commonwealth Games oh, um, by the special? Victorian well, government. They were saying, look, it's going to blow out a budget. The initial projection was of $2.6 billion uh, Australian. And then their budgets went to $6 billion, And they're going, look, we can't justify doing this. And well, they're selling the like reason as, <laughs> this is great fiscal <laughs> economic management and policy. Yeah. Well, this is the Victorian government. And if we've learned anything about the Victorian government, they're really good with numbers, okay? Like they're, they're, what, they're to be trusted. Fudging the numbers. <laughs> sure. I tell you what, they must have the most creative accountants that you could like, – well, well, they're, okay, they're, they're, they're dead since grown the concrete guys in, in really New really want to make this political go. here because mm -hmm. I can. And you know what? You go stuff yourself. <laughs> so for false allegations, mm. Pauline Hanson got sent to jail for false allegations around political funding. Yes. Dan Andrews has totally butchered this and he's not going to get our jail free card. It's like, oh, no, he did the right thing to cancel this because it's not cost us too much money. Okay, so let's right. look at the what debt of the state. Let, let's, let's have a look at Victoria's debt. It's a growing debt burden. It's, mm. and it's 90% uh, of Australia's debt. No, forecast to grow <laughs> from $135.4 billion in 2024 to $171.4 billion by 2026 to 2027. Now, mm. that means that if you look at the economy, the state's economy and what it projects, um, it'd be approaching, they reckon the projections mean the net debt as a proportion of the state economy be approaching by 2026, 24%. So the money that they were going to spend, the mm. $2 billion yep. or so, roughly, they're still saying we're going to spend this on regional uh, Victoria. Okay. Now, Bullshit. It's um, to, to fill the gaps in the snowy 2.0. Okay. So what I was going to say <laughs> is that the way they set this up from the beginning, it was going to be expensive. Okay. Because just the logistics of a big event of moving people from A to B is mm -hmm. a big deal. Not mm -hmm. only have you got the fans, but you've got the athletes, okay? Yep. And you've got all the officials and entourage that come with the athletes. Security as well. And then you've got all the politicians that come from mm -hmm. interstate. And if you've got royal families coming, I mean, this is, you're talking security. Oh, you're talking yeah. major, major you, you infrastructure. You don't get Meghan Markle cheap. I mean, now, let's face it. <laughs> I don't know. Harry got a cheap. <laughs> 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 So, Melbourne is very well. I don't know if you've been to Melbourne, but Melbourne is very well set up in terms of its sporting facilities. Okay. In relation to you take the train in yep. and you've got about, what, five, six, seven different facilities all in the one spot. You've Sorry, I the, hate Melbourne. I the, do everything. Got I the can't stay away from it. Yeah, but I'm talking public transportation. Just think of logistics. The right? trams. The trams. trams. The, the romance <laughs> of the trams just running people over. Perfect. Getting oh, people in and out of a sporting complex in Melbourne, they've done that well. Yeah. All right, they do oh, it very agree. well every weekend at the Melbourne Cricket Ground and and that sort of stuff. Yeah. So if the football is concerned, or the cricket's on or whatever, um, they do that well. I thoroughly agree. Uh, they've got the Flemington Raceway there. They've got the the, the Rod Laver Arena there. Mm -hmm. It's all in the one location. You'd wonder, hey, wouldn't it have been better off to use some of those facilities to host the Commonwealth Games and then you wouldn't have to spend so much on infrastructure and worrying about getting people from 8B. Now, yep, that would be a smart thing to do. They've decided to do this in, a, in an expensive way and go, well, we're going to put that infrastructure in in regional areas. And I've got nothing against the regional areas. I'm totally supportive, given sure. what we've been doing lately, of regional areas. However, you've just got to think logistically, getting from A to B becomes a lot harder to do. Extra cost, yeah, absolutely. So... Yeah. From the beginning, I think it was it was kind of just going. Now I can understand. Think about it this way: remember the Los Angeles Olympic Games going back many decades. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You they, know, I was born eighty three. They did it really well then. 
You know why they did it really well? Like, Labor was uh, cheap. Because the Russians boycotted it. <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> because they used an already existing stand. Yes. Like, yes. Arena, yeah, which was that. the the football uh, arena okay. that they used. They right? jazzed it up a bit, though, didn't they? Of course they did. But that's a lot easier than just starting yeah, from scratch. It's yeah. easy to put on. You know, facades and spot on all just that sort of give stuff. Give it a lick of paint, you know, it's a bit polish, and we're good to go. So, dig a little deeper. I think that event was for the Americans actually a profitable event hosting the really? games at that. Yeah. I would have well, to, actually, I'd have to double check my numbers I've on that. I've heard this that apparently only a few countries, um, especially like third world countries, don't actually make a lot of money off the Commonwealth Games and the Olympic Games. Right. So, even with all the expenses to build everything. The amount of tourism that comes in, the infrastructure, because people have got to pay for food and all that sort of stuff. They don't just go for the Olympic Games or the Commonwealth Games, but they also go, they go touring around, they go to regional centres. It's a massive economy boost to actually host the Olympic Well, this Games. comes down to who does the, the figures, right? Who actually does the numbers when they do the mm -hmm. studies? Because many years ago, I used to deal with Events Corp, which is the organisation that looks after events in Western Australia, because mm -hmm. mine links with, you know, to Australia, Australia, and all of that sort of thing. So, now it's very interesting because when they wanted the rally, when the rally was going really, really well and it was great, the numbers they gave us were superb. But the moment that Mark McGowan decided to can the rally, then the stats coming from the exact same organisation were very, very different indeed. Hmm. So that concerns me. It does, honestly, because if you if, with any event, right, if you, you want to go forward and you want to make it profitable, hmm. let's make sure we've got the right numbers. We haven't got propaganda. We've got genuine numbers. Oh, that's think, never going to happen. We're in WA. Look, if Victoria like, prides itself, though, in events, mm, okay, they yeah, do. They've absolutely. got the, the Australian Rules footy, as far as sporting is yep. concerned. They've got footy. They've got the rugby codes. Uh, they've got the cricket. You know, they pride themselves on the Boxing Day uh, test match that, yeah. that they get every year. Did um, anyone actually watch that this year? What's that? What's the that? cricket. Like, I don't have who watches I no, I the, the cricket anymore? This hasn't happened. Well, this is an interesting big bash. This is an interesting point. You raise they get rally Australia over there in Victoria, but you raise a very interesting point. What is this going to do? Who watched the Commonwealth Games here the last time it was on? I can hear crickets right now. I, really like, I, do, I don't even watch TV full yeah, stop. Like yeah. we do not have a TV in our house. So like, I can why I can understand in terms of you know what are the legal ramifications for Victoria now moving forward? Breaching this contract is a question coming into the, into the thing. How much is that going to cost them? Um, well, they'll just get a donation from Xi Jinping to cover the losses. Right. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's really interesting in terms of that spe uh, spectrum. But also, put it in context of this, now that we've got a the, – the, the Queen is officially dead – We've got the king. Yep. You sure she's dead? I first... thought she was a blue blood and she's like <laughs> gone somewhere else. No, no, sorry. That's down the rabbit hole. Ignore everything I just Please said. Please say that. <laughs> There's tinfoil under that beanie of his. Hey, this isn't the beanie my nana made me. It's so comfortable and it hides my bed hair. So thank you. what is going to happen? I mean, the King Charles is now, hey, the Commonwealth Games go over there. How does this look when they don't know where they're going to host it right now? Oh, if it's going to happen, full stop. When right? is it due to happen? Well, it's 2026 that it was supposed to uh, be happening in Victoria. Right. Now, the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, has said, we'll do it. Well, he, oh, he, really? He's bidding for it. Mm -hmm. Now, bear in mind that they were the that, that they were the last to host it. Yeah. It wasn't all that long ago that Gold Coast had it in 2018, though. Yeah, okay. So... Yeah. You just go, look, guys, it's time to give it to Tyre. Yeah. <laughs> How's the, uh, you're what, about four or five acres out your way? I have. I have. I, have. I can do it. <laughs> the front paddock. Hey, hey, you where we go? Yeah. Oh, I could. I'll take I'll a lazy billion up. dollars to renovate. Exactly. We'll give you a buck for that. <laughs> With only two toilets, there's going to be lines. I'm telling you that now. Hey, come on. Have you ever gone to a footy match? <laughs> oh, good point. Good like point. there's lines yeah. regardless of what you do. So oh, and it. it's like twelve dollars for like three chips and a bun. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you it's gonna smell bad behind the shed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just get the broadcast rights for it, all right? I'll That's get what right. you're gonna do. I'm working on it now. <laughs> so I'd like to ask anyway. our audience if it's all right. Oh, what absolutely. do you think about this whole thing? Do you think that is a good economic policy mm -hmm. um, to cancel the Commonwealth Games? Or do you think they should have gone ahead with it? What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm very interested to, to know what actually people out there think about this because, you know, we've seen the, the press conference and the, the, the press conference was just an absolute car crash, right? Like, honestly, just watching it, it was just embarrassing for, for Victoria, but also just embarrassing for Australia. Mm. And I appreciate that. I do appreciate that we've had some very tough times for obvious reasons over the last few years. And no, China can't just bankroll it like everything else in Victoria. Why not? So, well, here's my point. Like, okay, why don't you just do it 
intelligently, use the facilities like you say, okay? <laughs> and I appreciate it. It would have been great to take it out to the towns and that. But ultimately, sometimes you've just got to make the best of a shitty situation. You've got to, you know, harness what you've got and make that happen. Now, I reckon if they'd use the MCG, et cetera, da, 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 the tennis centre, all of those sort of places, they could have brought it back to cost. They could have actually done it for what they promised. And I think that if they'd been frugal, this is a big thing. Like in business, it's not what things sell for. It's what you buy them for, right? The cost involved, right? So fundamentally, if you can lower your costs, I'm not saying have a, you know, WA salvage Commonwealth Games here, right? But I'm saying if you pare it down and you basically are very smart about your facilities, you could make it profitable. And, and what it brings to the state, and as I say, my experience with Rally Australia is, like I still to this day, and we've, we haven't had Rally Australia since 2008, right, in Western Australia, that is. Okay, I still go to these little towns. I still go to these places, and I and I see how, like, they without that business, without mm. that injection of two weeks a year, how much it's damaged them, right? Mm. So, like, I can understand why in Victoria they'd want to take that out there. But mm. at the same time, sometimes you've got to get what you've got make the most of it. So if my opinion is actually to use your point of view of use the facilities I've got, make it happen. Um, I, I think I think what's also, I mean, we forget that the Victoria has the longest lockdown in the Western yeah, world than oh, of any point. state of, of Melbourne. This has cost them dearly. Yeah. And it's cost the country towns dearly too oh. because people weren't allowed to move to them. In fact, most people were trying to just get out of the state. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so this is the cost, this is a price You've extended the the credit card, and I think they were bidding for them in 2019 for mm. the games originally, okay. for the Commonwealth Games. But I mean, you put this in perspective. This this has been around since 1930. The Commonwealth mm -hmm. Games. What does this do one to the Commonwealth Games? Mm. And it's you know we've had a nation now or a state pull out and go, we don't want it now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be going, gee, okay, that's really going to tarnish our oh, reputation. It does. Big so, time. The other has... international event is FIFA World Cup. So you got yep. FIFA. And the Olympic Games. These are the two probably biggest sporting events globally For sure. that happen. Mm. And now you've had this one where Commonwealth was probably up there in third or fourth, yeah. and that's gone boom. Yeah, but okay, there's also, I don't know if I'm right on this, but I'll tell you what, I feel confident in saying this. I, In my opinion, Dan Andrews used the Commonwealth Games as an election promise. He used it to get votes because it was a desperate man who basically knew that you know he had the longest lockdowns in the, in the entire world. Such negativity, I think he used it. I don't, you know, I personally... I've I've got a, a strong feeling that maybe it was never going to happen. Maybe it was an empty promise, or maybe going, it was one of those promises of, you know, maybe you're going to get that bite for Christmas, right? So, person, going back to the first question about should we should Melbourne keep the Commonwealth Games? Personally, I think yes. Okay. Um, couple of reasons. There's not enough infrastructure being constructed in the regional centres already. So, sure, Australia has this terrible problem of centralisation. Yep. Everything is central to the capital cities. So the other one is they're going to say the regional centres. So when they say regional centres, they're not talking like beyond the Black Stamp and mm -hmm. what, what, they're talking like Wagga Wagga, which is like an hour and a half out of the city. Sure. So they're still metro centres, but they're just semi-rural areas because they're not in the central location. Well, you so, can get to Ballarat, right, in two hours on the train apparently. Spot on. So that's what I'm saying. So I think personally I feel that they should go ahead with it, even at the cost, even if it costs $10 billion to build that those infrastructure facilities outside of the major centre, I think is always going to be a good thing. It's going to generate jobs in those regional areas. The trickling down finances is going to help out a lot and it's going to give people who – especially the ones that work in the city and they want a, a way out is mm. going to give them the option of, okay, so there's work out of the centre. So it gives them the ability to be able to relocate their family out of the city. Okay. So it's not just so much, yeah, it costs money, but what is it going to do for those societies? Well, again, that's what, what my point so was that's about why, the country towns. It was such, it's such a stark difference. And, and there's a moment of sadness every time I drive into a country town now because I know, mm. like I remember, yeah, I'm sorry to go back into it, but the, I, I see... Like even when we were driving down south a couple of weeks ago when we went into Agent, and I mm. remember going through and seeing um, play equipment, right, that I know that Rally Australia paid for, right? Mm. I know. And I see that it's now, these years later, it's, it's getting worn down and it hasn't been maintained in that. And that's bloody sad for the kids in that mm. area. I worry that it's causing, the damage it's causing to the reputation of Australia, it, uh, I think it's, it gives a sneak to the whole country rather than just Victoria. Victoria have got, let's face it, okay, an absolute like this ridiculous grip on sporting events in this country. In fact, I think if I was if I was in charge, and I mean, let's face it, well, Elbow's certainly not in charge of anything, but if I would be spreading the love a little bit, as a sporting event's having so many major events based in Victoria, 
Okay, it really does damage the rest of the country. You know, we're supposed to be showcasing this country, and if we had decent uh, politicians, if we're decent uh, people at the federal le level, they would be making sure that these were being shared around. It's no good having, okay, the, the, the major tennis event, okay, the major the major football event, the major motorsport events. Why are I'm, they all coming I'm, out of it, right? Well, well uh, you're not going to like me on this one. It's not a federal government thing. No. I know it's not. So the but federal no, government shouldn't on, have anything to do with this And one. on it's that, the they, were seeking federal, they were seeking federal funding for the Commonwealth Games. Right. And they didn't get it. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, I'm, you know what I'm seeking? I, I, I absolutely appreciate that they are two different things, but I think that the federal government should be thinking about the Federation of Australia, the whole country as a whole, right? And when I see right now, we've got basically one state that's getting everything, right? You've got basically look. Yeah, that's it's because that one state is bidding for things. Yes. Like WA didn't bid for it. I don't think Queensland bidded for it. New South Wales didn't bid for it. I, I think so. Like, you, you can't blame Victoria for getting all these sporting events when they're the ones that actually bid for I'm it. I'm not actually blaming Victoria. I'm yeah. blaming a federal government. Yeah, but that's not a federal government thing. Yeah, I think So it's the state in. government needs to get off their ass and actually start doing things. Okay. So prime example, so the city of Geraldton. So a lot of people hate Shane Van Stein, but he's actually done some amazing things for Geraldton. So there was a government grant to redo all the curbs, driveways, footpaths in all the regional centres, like $180 million or something. You right. know, the only mayor that applied for that grant? No way. Geraldton. No way. Shane Van Stein got the entire po uh, pool of funds mm -hmm. because he was the only one that applied. Right. So you can't blame the Victoria for this one or blame the, the federal government because it's not a federal government thing. It's a state government thing. So the state government, the tourism minister needs to get off there actually ask okay. and actually do what they're meant to be doing. There's also this aspect too, is when you put on an event, mm -hmm. what's the risk? Nobody's well, going to come. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yep. We know that Victorians love going to events. They they love it. They, they have love. the yeah, population. Yeah, for no, it. I get that. Earth I get that. They, doesn't, they, so there's a doesn't. risk putting on these events. Okay, so uh, you know, putting something, you've got to remember the population size is different. Mm. So we're way like Adelaide or Darwin or, or you know, sure, it, Queensland, it, WA. We yeah. don't have the populations where New South Wales and Victoria are close enough that they can still attend, even if it's out of state. Yeah, but I get that. Okay, but okay, you take the V8 supercars up in Darwin. Okay, but mm. it couldn't be more isolated. Okay, mm -hmm. and people flood in for that, and the locals absolutely support it, right? Yes, because but that's it's... V8 supercars. Like, who wouldn't travel half a country to go see the V8 supercars? <laughs> I, okay, I honestly, when I watch the Olympic Games or the um, um... you love your synchronized swimming. I mean, oh, I'm you know, right up you, there. You, you know, know how evil some of them look. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I actually, funny enough, I enjoy the Winter Olympics the most of all, and, and how can I identify with that? You know why? Because I love the luge and the bobsled. That to me is yeah. I just love the That's... fact that Jamaicans won the bobsled. Once. No, they never won it. Mate. Oh, they, they won just a to... race to get no, there. They didn't. They competed, which is wonderful. But yeah, what I'm getting at is like, okay, I think you might be onto something because okay, certainly I struggle to see a sport in the Commonwealth Games that appeals to me. You know, like okay, no offense to people who are winning walking marathons, but like. I, you it's just look like a duck to me. You know what I mean? You it know what we need? We need V8 supercars in the Olympics. <laughs> Done. It was ongoing in the crypto world. The Ripple case versus the SEC. Now, for those who don't know what Ripple is, Ripple is a crypto coin um, that looks at streamlining transfers between banks yes. uh, internationally uh, and is hoping to replace the Swiss system um, that the banks do this through. Okay. Uh, in international settlements. The SEC is basically the easiest way to explain it. It's the Australian version of ASIC, the Australian right. Security, the Securities Investment Commission. The SEC does this. And what the SEC, they took Ripple to court, basically saying that they had been selling a crypto asset. And XRP, actually, they've done this with a lot of coins and they've settled outside of court. But um, Ripple, uh, and I refer to it as XRP because it's it's it's, it's also known as that. Okay, that's okay. The, um, the token? The token, uh, I can't think of the word, not acronym, but the um, the ticker, the ticker the tick that they, they trade okay. on. So XRP okay. is what it's known by. Um, so uh, what they did is basically they challenged it and said, no, we don't accept that. And the high court has ruled that, um, well, the court has ruled that um, it's not it's an invest investment contract rather than a security under the law. Now, why is that a big deal? It's a huge deal. It's a huge deal because this then starts recognizing cryptos as um, means of transfer of wealth as opposed oh. to an asset. And what is the transfer of wealth? 
a currency. That's right. right. And it has a huge implication on all the different space of crypto. And mm-hmm. they've been watching this case. And when it came out, finally, you know, bang, crypto, um, Ripple just went almost double okay. in terms of the value. Of yeah. yep. and the other thing is you go start watching all the other currencies, they're starting to spike as well. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now it's cooled off since then. And it didn't get it, it was a partial win. It didn't get the full tick of approval. Because what did happen was that it didn't accept the court did not accept uh that uh it would be accepted as far as the sales to unregistered sales of securities to hedge funds. So from an industry perspective, it said no, what was done, this was clearly set up in a situation um that you were selling and setting it up as something that was an asset. So there's a technicality there that they're having to work through. And the SEC has since this time has, uh, appealed the decision of the court on that. So it's ongoing. Uh, um, but again, the fact that they got it this far and mm-hmm. challenged it is yeah, absolutely. huge news for the crypto world. Okay, okay. Because, I mean, look, crypto is here to stay. You know, the old two paces out the tube. You, know? mm-hmm. um, I, I, you keep seeing those who with, with different organisations in, in the US particularly, you know, trying to control it, trying to, keep everybody you know, tied to the fiat system um mm-hmm. yeah it, it's not here to say because they don't try and move everyone across to well, digital this currency this is true so they'll the concept, try but i it will will they succeed in that i don't think they will i don't think they I will think, either <clears throat> i think bitcoin and ethereum will become the gold and silver they will become the cash of the crypto world what the court found as a matter of law ripples xrp and this is on ripples website ripples xrp sales and exchanges not ex- securities they were ruled when they did that, when they sold right. it on exchanges, they were not selling securities. They also said XRP sales by Ripple exec- executives, and the rule is not securities. And uh, Ripple's XRP distributions to developers, to charities, and to, to employees, not securities. So those three things are very, very significant mm. in the crypto world. So I'm, I'm excited by this because I, as much as I love cash, mm. I, I don't think cash will survive another 10 years. It's not I think there's, there's, no. there's too many world leaders who are pushing to go to a central digital currency, central bank digital currency. Um, there's too many people pushing for one world economy, one world currency for everything. Um, I think people need to be prepared for when actual each country has their own currency dissolved. I think they need to be ready and that they need to find a way how they can transact privately without the banks getting involved and without the governments getting involved. And so I think this is this is hugely important. It's also very important too in terms of taxation. Now, are there going to be taxation implications for the United States? Because if it's not um, it looked at as an asset, so to mm. speak, uh, would there be capital gains tax on these sort of um, tokens? Well, if it's not an stuff? asset, it's, there shouldn't be capital gains. Yeah. So I already know a heap of people have already been nailed in Australia right. for trading on Bitcoin, Ethereum, stuff like that. And they've yep. lost an insane amount of money because they got nailed as uh, the capital, gain. capital gains and there was another one they got nailed with um, income tax as well on top of it. So they ended up losing something like 70% of their earnings mm-hmm. because right. of tax. Yep. So will they get their money? If this is now deemed is a currency, mm. you don't pay stamp duty on currency. See, the thing is too, is if, Australians don't, if Australia doesn't embrace this rule, then how many people who are very serious crypto traders yep. Does move internationally? Of course, we go That's right. Exactly. I see. You well, later. we've already made that decision. We're moving all our stuff overseas. Yeah. So I mean, we're, it's we're not detrimental to around. this country because the reality is, so many people who are earning money, okay, are moving their base out of this country. It's, it's, it, we're we're raping the country of of its finances. No, well, ours is simple. We with the Aboriginal Heritage Act, because our yep. investment properties are considered strata properties. If we want to paint our stratas, because in the Heritage Act, it states that if you renovate your house over a strata property over 1,100 square metres, we have to get a permit. Crazy. I'm Absolutely. not getting a permit to paint my house. So we're selling up and we're, we're leaving. We're, right. we're taking all our assets offshore. Okay. So okay. Yeah, and we'll and still be but, here, but yeah. our assets won't yeah. be. Look, you've got to get advice from a professional on this sort of stuff sure. before well, you make those kind of great decisions recovery, that Derek. Travis has <laughs> done. This is not an endorsement to be like Travis in terms of – because everybody's situation is very different. Is. And, yep. and you've got to consider that, guys. You've also got to see – look, this is very early days in terms of, you know, how the IRS will look at this, how – Australia will respond in terms of this ruling, but it's it is huge. It, it, it it's going to be a big deal, and it's exciting for those who have believed in crypto for a long time. Mm. Uh, they call them the, the the Ripple Army, the XRP Army, and that sort of stuff. Um, what is interesting, though, in light of this, is there are some concerns that XRP itself or Ripple 
is encouraging a one world economy and that sort of thing because of what it's it's it, its mandate is okay. that's another issue a separate issue for another day I, I just think you know the technology can be used for any currency that you so choose oh. it's kind of like radio it can be used for good or evil um the crypto itself is is neither good nor evil it's how it's yeah, used yeah, with and that that i think you have to make that distinguish um distinguish it in, well, in i think in right now you, you know your fiat currency quite frankly is a pit bull you know it depends how it's being used you know if it's either your best friend or it's violent as well you, you know they say that cash you know is used for drug money a lot well, you know you buy your milk with that and you buy yeah. your bread with that that's your clothes right. with that i mean yeah, it's the same thing it's the same thing with bitcoin money. and they... they use cds for drug money <laughs> they use stolen tvs for drug money so are we don't ban tvs now we don't ban cds are we don't ban anything that can be used for well i don't know the us government's gone really hard on making sure drugs are available for all anyway so yeah. you know maybe especially in the white house yeah, so yes, exactly <laughs> hey yeah. josh josh just rocked up a little bit late as we're about to wrap up That's okay. now we've had an interesting comment here from catherine mm -hmm. um catherine if you're in perth i'd love to get you in to talk about this one actually um so i don't know if this will fit in the screen uh there are only eighty three thousand hectares of wet wets I have no idea how to pronounce that. It's some weird scientific name. Forest left in northern Queensland. Okay. Arc Energy is just a ministerial tick away from ripping into thousands of construct. What is it? Into a thousand to construct uh, industrial wind turbine development. Arc Energy, a subsidiary of Korea Zinc, will learn in September if Environment Minister, Minister Tanya Pilzenek. Pilbersek is prepared to serve the tranquility of the forest near Ravenshoe on the wow, some of these table like names are amazing to make way for 86 megawatts of wind turbines. Right, funny enough, just and so my phone is ringing, so yes, I, I can't. You certainly do. Just over the last few days, actually, a very interesting video has popped up on social media that goes through it's actually from someone who was working for one of the Queensland ministers, I believe. Um, who actually goes through the legitimacy of the wind turbines and, and how much they're costing, what they're doing to the environment and whatever, and lays it all out. And there's there's absolutely nothing positive in there about those wind turbines. So if you're going to destroy a, a rainforest to put these things up, you basically... How just, about we just put it somewhere else? Don't put it in the middle of a winter, in the middle of a rainforest. Absolutely. Now, like, we're Australia. We're covered in, like deserts like i'm sure you can find a desert to put a wind turbine there or something like right. come off thoroughly that's... great now we have one minute left of the show so i'm gonna throw it to Derek, mate let's let's tighten this up what are your thoughts on uh, on the crypto point of view um you know do you see it as a new the silver and gold if we, we're looking at that way or i i, I think it's well in terms of sending money to you know brian who lives three three thousand miles away sure it, this is a solution yeah cryptocurrency yep. can do that um we've all the reason there's been such a battle is to get it off the banks. The, yeah, the banks, don't, the middleman does not want to be cut out of the game. And the fees are huge. Yeah. yeah. Like to send money to Vietnam, 7%. Yeah. And they're Crazy. scraping on the foreign exchange, they're scraping on the fees to do it. Yep. This is eliminating the need for them and they've been caught out. And I think that's why there's been such a, a discreditation of this, especially in the early days where they yep. were bagging it out. Mm -hmm.